All right, we're talking about holding those to account. So support the open and civil exchange of views, even when you find them repugnant, even when they find, even views they find repugnant. So journalists should give, you know, voice to any idea. And, you know, cases of this are, you know, there are certain things that I think I don't agree with, right? I mean, for example, you know, um, I, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit on, I, I kind of vary from thing to thing, but I, I'm probably a little bit left of center, liberal wise. Um, but there are certain things like, for example, like I'm not a big fan of capital punishment. I'm not a big fan of, uh, you know, the KKK by any means. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, but yet my job as a journalist is not to just tell the ideas I agree with. I need to give voice to people like if the KKK and I find their ideas repugnant, I need to get them have their say. If they're doing a rally, I need to talk to the people in there. And so that is my job is to do it. Things like the um, uh, the Westboro Baptists where they go out and they protest military funerals and they hold protests and they say, oh, you know, God kills soldiers because they're gay, because they, America uh, accepts homosexuality. I find that view repugnant. But yet my job is to report all views, not to have an opinion on it. And I say this, and I talk about being a little bit left of center, because there are things like capital punishment. Well, I mean, I'm kind of pro-capital punishment, but I'm also a little bit anti-capital punishment. It kind of depends on the day, right? But there are journalists, like abortion. I'm kind of pro-choice. I mean, I think every woman should decide for herself. But I personally think that abortion's a bad idea. I think it's murder, right? But I think, I don't know if I'd say murder, but I think it's wrong. I think it's immoral. I think it's a wrong choice. And so what happens is, um, uh, as far as that goes, is that oftentimes, though, people, because they don't agree with it, if you're really big into pro-life or you're really big into pro-choice, you know, you might go in and be like, I don't even want, think the other side has a view, and you want to only write stories one way. Well, that's not what you should be doing. You should be representing both sides, okay, even though you don't like them. Because even though we may all agree that we don't like the KKK, if you get too many journalists together who all are pro-life, you may not get the pro-choice side represented, and you need to represent both sides. And even though you don't like them, one thing I always tell you is because I teach philosophy and I teach ethics is I say, you know, the reality is, is oftentimes ideas you don't agree with are oftentimes, uh, there's oftentimes good arguments for those. Even though you don't agree, even though you think they're wrong, there's oftentimes good arguments for the other side. And you need to be willing to be able to listen to and state their argument. And that's what a journalist should do. Recognize the special obligation to serve as watchdog over public affairs and government. Seek to ensure the public's business is conducted in the open and the public records are open to all. This is an example, like I was talking about that town in California where they uh, were making too much money. That was a matter where if those records had been open and easily accessible, people would have seen that. These people were getting paid excessive amounts of money. And oftentimes, like, journalists will print and they'll have on their websites, like, for example, if you go to the state journal register, sometimes you can find, like, they'll have a salary uh, lookup thing. As a matter of fact, you know, you can look up my salary if you can find the spot. You can find out exactly how much I make for a living. I'm a public worker. You know, you can find out all kinds of things about people who work for you. Now, do I think that everything is there about me in the public is stuff that I want printed on the front page of the paper? No. I don't want everybody to know exactly what I make or don't make. You know, I mean, I don't want everybody to know everything about me, but... Having that information available so that people can find it and go, wait, this seems to be out of touch, right? When you begin to go, hey, people at Lincoln Land are making 50 times what they make at any other community college, then it becomes suspicious. And so you need to be able to find that information. Uh, that information should be publicly available. But um, I don't necessarily think that, uh, you know, it doesn't mean you have to put it in the front page, but your job should be to make sure that, you know, you are going out and making sure that, you know, if people want to find information, if the records are there, that they should be attainable, that the government shouldn't be do not allowing you to see it because they don't want you to see it. You should make sure records are available and that people can find them because that's how we're able 
to make sure that society functions and those in power are held to account. Provide access to source material when it is relevant and appropriate. That means tell where you got your information from uh, when it's appropriate and relevant. You know, if you need to give the background, then do it. You shouldn't always do it. Don't just give it out for any reason. But, um, you know, if, if necessary, you can give that. Boldly tell the story of diversity and magnitude of the human experience. Seek sources whose voices we seldom hear. I talked a little bit about giving voice to the voiceless. And this talks about, you know, diversity and magnitude of the human experience. Don't just talk to those in power. Don't just talk to white males. You know, don't just talk to, you know, white females. Talk to everybody. You know, oftentimes, oftentimes, uh, you know, you know, especially like in, a, in a certain towns, like, I mean, there's oftentimes a large immigrant population. And those, oftentimes the immigrants keep to themselves and you don't see them out at like city events and public events and fairs. But that doesn't mean they don't have a vibrant community that doesn't deserve to have their story told. You need to go out and try to reach out. Go to a mosque. Go to an, to a, uh, to a, um, uh, you know, to a, to a Latino festival. Do things that are not necessarily what everybody else would do, even though these are somewhat specialized things that most people in a town, especially a town that's predominantly white or predominantly, you know, certain ways, will not necessarily see or experience. But you need to get out there and tell all sides and talk to all people. Avoid stereotyping. Journalists should examine the way their values and experience may shape their reporting. So don't let your own views or stereotypes about people, whether it be about poverty, race, gender, uh, you know, job, etc., avoid stereotyping in all its forms. Don't assume that, uh, you know, you know, don't, and don't make a big deal out of it just because somebody's a woman and they're doing something. But at the same time, if a woman is doing something pretty extraordinary, then you should tell it because somebody's doing something extraordinary, not because they're a woman. Uh, you should do it be not because they're black and they're doing something. You should do it because they're doing something extraordinary. They're doing something good. They're doing something great. And so make sure, uh, you know, you are telling these stories fully and not just, you know, relying upon stereotype and not just doing, well, it's really unusual that a black person would be doing this. That is stereotyping. It's really unusual that a woman would be doing this. But yet you also need to tell the full story. So, you know, uh, you know, be careful about stereotyping. Be careful about letting your preconceived prejudices and preconceived ideas of what, you know, what people of different races, genders, religions, backgrounds do, you know, but also tell, you know, tell a diverse stories, but don't let your stereotypes and don't stereotype the people when you're doing it. Label advocacy and commentary. That basically means that if you're writing a column or something that has an opinion, you need to label it. Don't just, don't put any commentary or personal opinion into a news story. Yeah. Try to get this in here. Sorry. All right. Never deliberately distort facts or context, including visual information, clearly labeled illustrations from reenactments. Meaning, don't lie in a story, but also visually don't lie. Don't if if you take a picture of. Uh, somebody doing something, then they should actually be doing it. You shouldn't have them act like you're reading. Act like you're doing this. That's PR. That's not journalism. Everything you see in a photo, everything you see in a video should be people doing it naturally. It should not be them doing it in order to get a better picture. You shouldn't ask people, hey, can you hold it for a second while I take a picture? Because that is distorting reality. You, t you capture reality. You don't make reality. And visually is included. And that can come in the fact that if you do a photo illustration, like in a newsprint or a website, you need to label it as such. If you do a video reenactment of like a crime or a plane crash or something, you need to label it very clearly on the screen. This is a reenactment. This is not... Because anytime people see it, because it's coming from a journalistic source, the assumption is, is that they are seeing something real. They are not seeing something created for the screen. You are, re you are representing reality, not... You are not represent. You are representing reality. Not. Uh, it's not the case that you are representing. Uh, you know the story. You're representing reality. And then the last one is never plagiarize. Always attribute. And that one's fairly easy. Always give attribution. And don't ever make stuff up. 
which brings us to the next of them, which is minimize harm. And I'll talk about that separately.